this is going to be a quick video. I wanted to come on here and give you guys a quick little update because I had somebody reach out to me who was saying that they are upgrading their computer and they're not entirely sure if Infuse is going to be working anymore. And they saw that I made, you know, an Infuse video on how I use it for real estate and it was really helpful for them. Um, and so they were trying to figure out if there was an alternative um, or if they can get Infuse to work. And this is going to pertain to people who use both OS X and Windows. And I wanted to get on here and show you an alternative that I have used that um, if you wanna do everything yourself and kind of keep it in house, it might be a worthy alternative to Infuse. As far as I know, it is still updated um, and it plans to be in the future. It's a little bit more uh, supported and developed than Infuse is, but I have been able to get very similar, um, if not better results with a little bit of tweaking. I think Infuse is a little more friendly out of the box, whereas this is gonna require a little bit of tweaking for you. Um, the program is called SNS HDR. You may have heard of it. It is a little bit more of a photomatics kind of user interface, but there is batch processing available in it. So once you get a preset that you like, you can just bring everything in and batch it out. Um, an important note is if you are like me and you use one of the new Nikon cameras that uses a high efficiency file format, <clears throat> like high efficiency star or just high efficiency and it isn't just uh, a NEF file, you are going to need to convert them to DNGs um, so that they can be used in this program because it does not play well with it. So if you get something that is kind of like just a bunch of crazy colored lines everywhere, um, that's what's happening is that it's, you've got a higher compression ratio on and that is only supported through Nikon software and as far as I know, Adobe and maybe um, capture one, but that's where that is. So if you have that problem, that's what you need to do. Just convert it over and it should work. Uh, you can outport things as JPEG and TIFF and I have had really good luck with it. So let's kind of jump in. I'll give you guys a five bracket that I did at a recent house. That was a pretty complicated blend. Um, and I'll show you what we can do and hopefully it helps you guys out. All right, this is the website, SNS HDR here. Um, there is a light version and I do apologize to uh, the person that reached out to me. I do believe I told you that there was um, a light version that was available for Macintosh or OS X. <clears throat> um, and, but it does seem if you go to the version comparison, that the light version is only available for uh, Windows. Now, the light version is a great way to get into it. I do believe there is a demo. Yeah, there is a demo here, so you can download the demo. Um, um, and I'm, I'm going to assume that it is for both since the pro version over here says that it is for Windows and OS X. Um, but you can see that it's got everything you could need. Uh, batch module processing is only available in the pro version um, and Buying it is honestly not. Again, it's a one-time purchase and you get lifetime updates for the life of the software. Um, 85 euro, uh, you can do the conversion over for that, but really for one for a one-time fee, it's really not that bad. <clears throat> uh, you, A lot of their examples, they're gonna have a lot of real estate stuff. So you can see like, here's some examples that they have done. Here's a bunch of other things. And, and they're, they're gonna be honest, they're really nice looking. Um, I really enjoy this application. I think it works really, really well. Um, I have the light version downloaded because I don't do a ton of editing myself anymore. Um, I do a lot of, if I do, it's a lot of hand blending. So I go in and I hand mask and hand blend stuff. I think you can even see it in, in this one that they have done some hand blending because these don't look completely natural. But anyway, regardless, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, and we can go from there. So in Lightroom here, these are gonna be pretty underwhelming. This is going to be a shoot that is not like, oh my God, this is a million dollar home. This is a ranch out in the middle of the country here. These are unedited files. They have nothing done to them. They are five brackets, two stops apart. Um, this shot specifically was asked for by the real estate agent. Um, and I just wanna wanna give it to you raw and show you this is what you can do with this application. So all I have done is I have gone in and exported these with my editor's preset. I use Image Desk right now and I have changed it over to a DNG. So it is going out as a DNG just with these settings um, and then I have pulled them in to SNS HDR and this is what it has given me. So this is one I have drug around a little bit. You can see, uh, here's all my little 
different create histories. This is where I started. This is what it first came up with, and it's pretty underwhelming. Um, but with some brightness tweaks and a couple of these little values over here, I've been able to pull something in that is fairly similar to Infuse. And once you have this done, you can save this as a preset. And then if you have the pro version, you can batch this out um, and it will export as a TIFF or a JPEG uh, from here. And then you can import it back in. There also is some functionality to set up an external editing path so that you can then open it in an external editor. I have not done a whole lot with this application other than kind of keep it on um, on the back end for me as a backup in case I needed something. But like I said, I have been outsourcing most of my work because as I have gotten busier and busier, it has become very clear to me that I need to have an editor um, working with me full time. Um, and this does a great job. I mean, you can, can we zoom in? I don't know if I can zoom in. There we go. You can see like, I mean, it. we've got some chromatic aberration here, but we're talking, we're at a hundred percent zoom and nobody's going to do this. And it looks pretty good. I mean, there's, there's a little bit of haze here and there, but this is nothing that wouldn't come up in infuse as well. And they do have a lot of their own presets that you can come in and tweak. Like I chose the natural preset and then tweaked it from there. You could choose interior, and then you just come over here and you can play with stuff. We've got our brightness, which is gonna give us that. This is definitely too blue, so I would come into the temperature and I would definitely change the temperature on it. That might be a little bit too warm. It also seems to be slightly pink, so we'll do like maybe minus two. Um, and then yeah, you can just see what these do, right? This raises our white point. This is a highlight protection of that. And then this is gonna give us our lights. I actually kind of like it right there. I'm not too, I don't like too fake of a sky. Uh, midtones, this is gonna boost up our midtones, and then we've got the midtone blacks, which I think we can lower those a little bit. Shadow is gonna help us boost up those shadows a little bit there. I'm gonna drop this black point down just a bit, or this blacks down, and I might drag the black point up slightly just to give us a little bit more, something like that. And then you can adjust sharpening and your saturation hue and vibrance. I might take that saturation down just a hair, something like that. And again, it's as simple as that. This may not be bright enough for you. Again, you can play around with some of this stuff and reduce your contrast, bring it up, however you want to do it. Um, and you can see, you can get something that is pretty darn close to what you were wanting or getting out of Infuse. And so this would be a great option for you if you are looking to replace it, if um, the updates haven't really been what you've wanted to see out of them, or you're looking for something that isn't Photomatix. I personally uh, don't enjoy Photomatix. I think Photomatix is kind of a pain, and it, it just, it has the right idea, but it doesn't take it far enough, or it doesn't do a good enough job. And this here is, for a one-click solution, once you have a preset in, this is probably as good as you're going to get right now until somebody brings in some AI technology that can really help with these windows and things. Like I said, I hand blend all my stuff using luminosity masking. Um, and I try and keep it really simple because I find going too far and trying to have too much depth in things. You can see here, this is where we're getting a lot of the haziness around the windows and, and an image is trying to just do too much. And I don't, the, the blue sky behind these trees, it's a January day in this photo it isn't needed it I don't want them to be blown out but I also don't need them to be this crazy depth so it's something to keep in mind that when you do these one click solutions you are going to be giving up something and you're going to have to be correcting it out later on so uh, I hope that helps I hope that that can give you guys some insight into something that uh, might help you um, on the new Macintosh uh, M1 and whatever they're on M4s now M3s uh, because I do know that Infuse has become a bit hard to use on those uh, you can look up something called Rosetta 2 uh, that does make older um, x86 Intel based programs, which is what Infuse would be, um, compatible with the new Apple Silicon. Uh, that is called Rosetta 2. You can look it up. Uh, I believe it was linked in the official Adobe forums. I'm not going to link it because I don't really know a whole lot about Macs. I don't use them anymore um, and I don't want to lead you astray. 
but that is something I did see in the official forums and on Reddit, people saying that Rosetta is working, uh, Rosetta 2 is working on that. So check that out. Uh, let me know in the comments below and, and maybe you guys have a solution to this. Maybe you found this video and you're like, hey, I was having this issue. Here's what I did to fix it. Let other people know. Be helpful in the comments and, and let other people know what you did to solve that because I do know the Mac user base is growing. Um, those M1 chips and whatever's are, are very good at productivity and a lot of people like to have the flexibility of having one of those laptops and being able to do it so if you guys got a solution let us know in the comments down below um what you did to fix it and yeah thank you guys so much uh appreciate all the following appreciate the comments we'll keep it going